Hello fellow model railroaders and uh, welcome to another video. This time I would like to share with you uh, two of my latest projects. One of them is the installation of interior lights in this lovely uh, LS models made uh, CD sleeping car. And the second part will be around um, how to prevent interior lights from uh, flicker. And this is the uh, installation that I will be sharing with you. You can see the fully illuminated corridor side of the car. On the other side I have light on in um, attendant compartment and I'm not sure how well I'll be able to see. There's a reading light, small light in one of the double compartments as well. The second part of the video will be about how to stabilize the lights inside your model. You put the model on the layout and uh, what happened is this. And I don't know about you, but there is nothing worse on my layout than having a train consist of 10 cars projecting disco lights. I decided to build my own inexpensive system and I'll be more than happy to share with you uh, how to do it and how to build it in-house. I would like to start with a short demonstration of the power supply stabilization system that we're going to be working on. Uh, we all know what is uh, the reason for this kind of effect. The bottom line is you have to build a system which will stabilize the power supply to your interior, interior lights and the best way to do it is uh, by installing large capacity capacitor inside the car. And um, just to demonstrate how effective they are is the car at the background uh, is a car without the capacitor and both of the cars on, on the foreground are with capacitor. So I'm going to hit my power supply off now. And you can see how long the cars on the foreground are holding power supply and you can see them dimming. And we can do it again. You can see the car in the background without the capacitors, the power supply is gone right away as soon as you hit the off button. And of course what the system is going to help you out with is to maintain the constant power supply to your LEDs and the lights inside. Of course we will need some space to install the additional electronic components in every car and the beauty and advantage of working with the models of sleeping cars uh, the modern designs that usually have uh, whole sections of cars dedicated to restrooms or bathrooms which are uh, blocked out and they have no windows and the best examples are the RZD cars by the way both of them are from LC, uh, LS models where you have an entire long section here on both sides no windows and I uh, I have all the electronics here and here in this section in the CD car I use slightly different approach and you'll see it in a minute in some of the older generation cars you can use probably restrooms to hide the electronics. So let's take a look inside. You go. These are the wipers or the pickups you will receive with your model. There's a four of them in a sachet with, uh, included with the small parts and they are designed to be installed right behind the wheels, resting on the back of the wheels right here and of course on the opposite side as well. I have mine installed, I don't know how well you can see them. There's a wiper resting on the back of the wheel here, here, here and here. I like the system a lot because you can install um, the wipers and the pickups without removing the wheels. Uh, you don't have to remove any of the details um, and the system is pretty much invisible from outside um, and it's very effective. So you have a pickup from all four wheels. With the capacitor systems that we're about to install, you don't need the additional wipers, uh, which is actually good news because one of the drawback of this system is, is these wipers, um, they tend to generate quite a bit of friction. And this is of course the top side. You can see the contact part of the wiper, which is this one here, coming through right here and it's already flattened and I have two leads attached, one here and one here. 
then I ran the wires down below and through the opening uh, right through the pivot points. I like to run the wire through the pivot points so I don't have any movement on them uh, side to side. Um, unfortunately, if you want to do uh, the same type of execution, you will have to drill one uh, millimeter hole about 45 degrees, 30, 45 degrees uh, angle here through the pivot, pivot. And the reason for it is because there is a dividing wall sitting right on top and you have to drill it right through in order to miss the dividing, um, dividing uh, wall above. There are factory design openings already here and you can thread the wires through this opening very easily. There's another one here as well. Now you can see the supply wires coming down through the floor right there from the, from the wipers right along the floor you don't have to worry about this part because this is covered by the outside wall and then I ran the wires up to the roof uh, to supply the rest of the circuit. As you can see I used the LED strip again for the corridor lights. I like to work with them because they're extremely economical. Uh, you can buy for a couple of bucks like 5 meters of this tape um, and it's of course uh, self-adhesive uh, tape on the back. Um, the way how I did it is uh, I installed it in the highest spot and you can probably see here right there this is the curve of the roof so this line here below is way above the um, windows line uh, even though it looks like this uh, relatively low. The rest of the components are hidden here on the circuit board um, and you see the I believe they are uh, the individual uh, restrooms in the first class compartments and the beauty of them they are a perfect hiding spot for some of the electronic components in this case i'm using two big uh, capacitors and the rectifier on the other side and they fit perfectly fine for the compartment slide um, i use the two tiny leds you can see one here and there's another one on this end I'm not sure how well we're going to see it. It's right here. And then there's the rectifier, two capacitors, and a couple of resistors on the other side. As you can see, there's already groove cut it out and spot right here to support. Uh, light strip or uh, uh, a decoder or some type of a circuit and I use this one this space uh, to generate my uh, circuit board so let's talk about the flow of, of the circuit board for those of you guys who are familiar with electronic components I'm sure you already got it uh, I'm sure there is a quite a bit of audience with less uh, experience and I would like to quickly explain what is happening here and trust me this system is very simple to build and may look a little bit uh, overwhelming at first but it really is not. Power supply is coming from the tracks and by the way this is system designed for DCC to work with uh, digital controlled uh, layout not DC. So the power supply is coming from the two wipers, two pickups, it's going into the circuit board. The first component is a rectifier which is hidden here in the first compartment. Uh, then from a rectifier, the rectifier is supplying uh, electricity to two large uh, capacitors followed by three one uh, kilo ohm resistors. Um, I'm wiring three in line because I use them to fine-tune the intensity of the lights in the car. Once I have the working prototype, I will wire the power supply to the last one see if it's bright enough if it's not like that was the case in, in in this model i backed off one so right now i'm using only two of them um, and then if you decide that you want to have the lights even brighter you can back off even one more and, and just use one of them and on the other side you can see the wires from the circuit board coming here and then you have a row of LEDs. Now, the micro LEDs which are used to uh, illuminate the service compartment and uh, the passenger compartments, they are wired directly from the LEDs here on the strip. The reason for it is just because, like I, like I mentioned, this power supply is 12 or maybe 10 volts at this point with the resistors. 
you have to tap onto the power supply directly through LEDs to power the SMEs of the micro LEDs. Um, so here's one. Here's the other one. Right here. One and second, and you can see the wires right here. So what's going to happen is, is once you run this uh, car, this model on the layout, the electricity is coming from here, from the wipers, through the rectifier, charges the two capacitors, which are acting pretty much as uh, instant uh, rechargeable batteries, uh, through the resistors to reduce the power to the light strip. In case of any disruption of uh, power supply coming from the wheels, the energy is being drawn from these two large capacitors and uh, supplying the power and smoothing it out at the operation of the of the light strip. Uh, that will last for about two, three seconds uh, at this capacity. Uh, once again, twice 1100, that's overkill. I ran some prototypes earlier and some experiments. You can easily do it with one 1100. Okay, so let's go over the diagram and the schematics. So you have a wheel set. I'm not sure, track power. We have a two wipers at the back of the wheels. The wire goes up into your car to the floor. The first stop on the circuit board is the rectifier. And this is this little guy here. You can see the four prongs at the back, which are corresponding to the connections. Here's the output in DC. And then you're going to have a plus, minus. These are the markings for the rectifier. Two capacitors. Now, I have two of them, but uh, if you have space for one, you can decide to use one. And then I have three 1K resistors right here. The capacitors are two times 1100 UF rated at 25 volts. The rectifier is 1.5 amp rated at 35 volts, which is more than enough. And then the uh, resistors here are three times 1K. And what you're going to end up here is with DC output anywhere between 10 to 12 volts. And this is the lead where the wires are going to power your light strip with LEDs. This is the LED strip and uh, you have to pay attention. You have a markings here on the, on the leads, uh, marking the positive and negative lead. This strip needs to be rated 12 volts. Just like I mentioned before, I have the three resistors uh, installed here and the only reason for it is because once I build my working prototypes, I like to move that lead here between the three resistors and see what is the ultimate and uh, preferred brightness of the light coming out of the light strip. So uh, I will build three of them and then start here and then move the wire up and down and see which one uh, is giving you the best uh, uh, illumination. If you know exactly what volume you want to install here, you don't have to have obviously three of them. You can go straight for 3K one resistor right now. I have my lead actually connected here on the second one. So this one is just simply convenient way of, of playing with the with the brightness. So I think that's all, guys, and uh, happy model railroading, and um, thank you very much. Yes. And from specific dimension standpoint of view, the capacitors are 10.1 millimeters, 20, 20.5. The rectifier is also around nine millimeters by. 
uh, and the board that I cut it here is about 10 millimeters, uh, 9.2, and it's matching the uh, guide here already made by LS Models. For those of you uh, a little bit less familiar with electronic components and uh, not feeling really comfortable with putting uh, electronic circuit together, this is a very simple explanation how to wire the system. The rectifier, which you can see here in the background, you can see two waves here. That's your input from, uh, from the wipers, from the pickups. By the way, there's four leads at the back and these signs here are corresponding to the leads at the back. So this is where your power supply from the tracks is coming from, to these signs, two, two, two of those here. Then you have a positive, which is this one, and the negative lead is on the opposite side. So it's going to be right across the positive. So pretty much the orientation is going to be like that. The capacitors. You can see clearly there's a stripe on one side, uh, one side with negative marking and that is the marking for the lead coming out of the capacitor and actually one of them is shorter, that's the negative lead. And obviously the one on the opposite side is, is a positive. And you need to two of them if you want to build exactly the same system as I have here. And all you need to do is just simply connect them in parallel, like this.